Hi, everyone, and welcome to Brian's Horror Corner, and welcome to this random horror movie pack review as part of my April series where I review um, horror movie packs from my collection. Um, so today we're going to go ahead and take a look at another four movie pack collection that I have right here entitled Hollywood Hits. You can see that it includes Hostel, Hostel Part 2, The Tattooist, and The Hunt for the BTK Killer. So those are the four movies that uh, that I watched and that are going that I'm going to go ahead and review. So I'm just going to start and go through each movie what I thought of it and then I'll give you my my order from my least favorite to my favorite and whether or not I'm going to keep this uh this horror pack or not. So we start with the original Hostel which is the um the director's cut um Hostel from 2000 what is it 2005 I believe. Yeah, or wait a minute, 2005, 2006, something like that, the first Hostel movie. Um, it's really enjoyable. This is actually only the second time I watched it. I watched it a few years after it came out, like in the late 2000s, like 08, 09, something like that. And I wasn't quite as inept with horror at that point or wasn't watching horror as much. So I was a little bit more taken aback by the gore and and, and stuff, the gratuity that's involved in the movie. This time I got to actually take in the story and it's actually, there's actually a lot more to this movie than the gore and the, the sex and the nudity, although that stuff's certainly there for you. But this movie's actually got a few different layers to it, in my opinion. I think it's very well done. Um, I really enjoy Hostel, the, the first one. Um, yeah, good performances, especially by Jay Hernandez. It's well directed by Eli Roth and, um, uh, presented by Quentin Tarantino, of course. That's a pretty pretty good combination if you like blood and gore, that's for sure. So, yeah, the original Hostel, uh, classic, you'd have to say. Um, Hostel Part 2, I enjoyed it. I don't think it's as good as the first one. It's basically a carbon copy with the exception of the fact that they change the main characters from being a couple of frat guys to being sort of a group of of young college women. But other than that, it's basically the same the same sort of thing. I guess you do get the second one does provide you with a, a little bit more um, character development with so, with a couple of the prospective killers that are going to partake in the in the movie, which is kind of interesting. But I mean, overall, it's the same as the first movie, just not as good in my opinion. Kind of a carbon copy, but still very enjoyable, and I definitely uh, would watch it again. So those are the two hostile movies. Um, the tat. Uh, oh, by the way, Hostel Part Two is from two thousand seven. Then we have the Tattooist, which is actually the only rated R movie on here. The other, um, this one and these two are unrated. <clears throat> um, the Tattooist is rated R. I'd never seen it before. Um, it's not great, but I will say it's not terrible either. I actually was pleasantly surprised. I think it had a really good idea. A really good concept um, involving, um, I think it's a New Zealand slash Asian release, if I'm not mistaken, or, or sort of co-production. Um, it's got some some interesting stuff about Samoa culture, and as it relates to tattoos and certain tattoos. Um, yeah, it's just a very a very interesting and unique uh, premise for a horror film, and. I mean, it doesn't work perfectly. There's the movie could, really wasn't really ninety minutes. There's a lot of filler with it and stuff, but I enjoyed it, especially the last half hour. I thought there was some good suspense and some good gore. Um, wasn't quite sure where it was going to go. So, yeah, I think the tattooist is pretty good for you know. Again, it's not great. It's not um, you know, it's not a classic or anything like that, but not bad for the tattooist. And then finally, we get to. The Hunt for the BTK Killer. Um, so I didn't know it until I put it on, but this was actually a made-for-TV movie. CBS aired it, I believe, in 2000, 2005. Um, so at first I was like, oh, God, this is uh, the TV movie. Why would they add that in this kind of collection that's entitled Hollywood Hits? But I have to tell you, man, as I started to watch the movie, I actually got into it. And it's very interesting how this killer... <clears throat> how he ate, he really lives a pretty simple lifestyle um where he's never suspected he he goes for like 15 20 years without with killing 10 people and not 
you know, before he's finally caught. Um, it's very, uh, it's very thought provoking, very scary in that regard. When you think about it, the fact that the killer was involved in his church, he was married. None of these people had any idea what he was doing on the side, um, or in his life. Um, it's kind of like he was too, I don't want to say he had split personalities because he really didn't. He was the same person. He just did a really good job at hiding it from everyone. Um, so I have to say for a made for TV movie, it wasn't, um, it wasn't the worst I've ever seen. Now, would I watch it again? Probably not. I probably wouldn't go out of my way to watch it again, but I, I have to admit, I did, I did get all the way through it and I did watch it. So obviously made for TV, you're not going to get any gore or any kills or anything on screen. It's all more of a, it's sort of more of like, um, a killer documentary kind of thing in movie and TV movie form. But um, I didn't know that much about the BTK killer, who is based in real life. This was somebody in Wichita, Kansas, that from 74 to 91 actually killed 10 people. And um, as I said, he was blended into the community. He had a job. He had a wife. He had involvement with the church. So he wasn't your what you think of as like a typical um, serial killer. So... That was interesting. But yeah, I mean, overall, this wasn't a terrible collection. And to be honest, I think I'll be keeping it. Um, I know the other collection I did, I already said I was going to sell it and then just get a couple. Well, one movie for sure on a, on a, it, a release, and that was Fear, um, single release. And then I might do it with the, um, Raising Cain as well. The other two movies I didn't give a crap about. So I'm selling that one. But this one I think I'm going to keep because I enjoy the first two Hostels. And even the tattooist, I can get something out of that. I could see watching this again because it's got a really unique premise. Probably not this one, but again, if I if I'm in the mood for like a, a serial killer documentary kind of TV movie, eh, you never know. Never say never, right? But there's three out of the four that I enjoy enough to um to keep. Maybe at some point I'll get the original Hostel on like a like a Blu-ray or a 4K release if the the price is right. I'm not going to spend too much on it because as much as I do enjoy Hostel and think it's a good horror movie, it's just not really my kind of horror movie as far as like um, something that I need to rush right out and get the best copy of. I'm not the biggest fan of quote unquote torture porn, which I don't really like that label, but you know what I mean. Movies that are pretty gratuitous in nature between the violence, the blood and the gore and and also in this in the case of this movie, sex and nudity as well. It pretty much runs it all. Um so if I had to put them in order, I would say, again, none of these are as bad. Even this one's not as bad as the two on the first, um, the two movies on the first uh, horror pack that I did earlier this month. But this would be fourth. This would be, you basically just go in this order, fourth, third, second, first. So the two hostile movies are definitely, um, I could see a scenario why I would own those on single releases at some point down the road. I probably wouldn't pay a whole lot for Hostel 2. Hostel 1, I'd pay up to probably 10 or 12 bucks for on a, on a nice Blu-ray release. I probably won't get the Tattooist, and I certainly won't get that. So I foresee me keeping Hollywood hits here. I foresee keeping this horror movie pack. Um, so, yeah, that's my review for this uh, particular pack. Oh I, had, oh, I should mention, too, that this director's cut of the original Hostel. It does include an alternative director's... Um, cut ending, which I'd never seen before. Um, I don't really want to give too much away here. If you've seen the original Hostel, you kind of know how it ends. One thing I really enjoy about Hostel, as I'm sure most people do, it's very cathartic. The last 20 minutes or so when our, um, I don't want to call him a hero, but when our, the person that you kind of sympathize with um, that's left at the end of the movie basically gets his revenge on everybody that wronged him that was involved in this Hostel um, action and um, the 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 alternate uh, director's cut. It's interesting, but I don't think it's as good as or effective. And I'm glad they didn't go with that one. I just wanted to throw that out there for those of you that have seen or have the version that includes the director's cut uh, alternate ending. You know what I'm talking about. But go ahead and comment down below, guys, if you own this pack, if you've seen these movies, what you think of them. I'm assuming most people have seen these two movies. I'd be curious how many people have seen The Tattooist. I think I would recommend it at least a one-time watch, just because it has a really interesting premise and story. Um, this one is a TV movie, so if that's not your thing, although again, if you're if you're ever in the mood for like a documentary serial killer, 
and you don't care about the kills and the gore, but just kind of the interesting facts about how it went down, then check it out sometime. So that's my review. So yeah, go ahead and comment down below, guys, what you think of those movies that I reviewed on this horror movie pack. Please like this video and hit the little notification bell below so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews for this series. And please uh, hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my great horror content, not just the rest of this series, but what I got coming up for May, June, July, August, right on down the line. So I hope you enjoyed this random horror movie pack review. Thank you for watching. Stay scared. Bye.